Johnny, I want to take you on a trip through time and space. Oh, God. I mean, good. We're looking back at the mystical secrets of the universe here. Secrets of beer flavours, Johnny. What if I told you there was a whole hidden world of flavours in beer that we're not able to unlock, but there's a secret wisdom that we're finally finding, Johnny? What if I told you all of that? You talk about files. Yeah, I'm talking about files. So, Johnny, I was being a little bit glib, but these are ancient, these things. They've always been there. Yeah, these are incredible flavours in beer that have always been there in beer, but we haven't necessarily known they've existed, and we certainly haven't been able to access them. And your glib intro was actually 100% correct, because there is a form of alcohol production where they do know about thars, where they unlock them all the time. Mm. And it's this thing, I think it's called, it's pronounced wine? Weenie? Wine? <laughs> Weenie? Weenie. I've Weenie? heard... I've heard of Weenie. I'm not, it's not as good as beer though. It's no. not as good as beer. No, I see people drinking it and I'm yeah. just like, oh, it's just flat beer. So this video is about to get very technical. I spent a lot of time on the internet trying to distill this down into what I think is going to be the simplest, most glib explanation of what thials are in beer and why it might be changing, certainly, the future of IPA. This changes everything. Is that a reference to? So if it's getting techy, we should probably put a beer in the glass. Mate, I'm already thirsty. All, all of this information. <laughs> it's drying my brain out, Johnny. Um, right, so these, we've got two beers from the amazing Track Brew. Yeah, brewing, I love Track. Uh, up in Manchester. They are great at hazy beer. Mm -hmm. um, and potentially, potential is a word we're going to be using a lot here, they're going to get even better. So this is, well, to start with, this is a Nelson Sovan hopped New England, uh, New England Pale Ale. Right. Tell me about it. Tell me what you're getting. I'm getting. I am getting a grapey kind of note off of it, like a fleshy sort of grape. Because I think the the freshness. So it's like a white wine acidity. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Definitely. So I, I'm definitely getting that. I'm also getting real passion fruit, like acidic kind of passion fruit vibes, um, and maybe almost like lemon sherbet or something like that. Did you just snort beer? Yeah. Yeah, it happens a lot on this channel. Oh, now, I, now I'm getting the passion. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a super fresh, lightly acidic kind of aroma. It smells a bit, a little bit tart, doesn't it? It for does, sure. for yeah. sure. Yeah, let's give it a go. Wow. Like way zippier, mm. way more zesty than you expect in New England to be. New England, you think it's going to be juicy and a bit flabby. Yeah you know, kind of overripe fruits. This one is citrusy, zesty. I don't know whether the grape is in our head and we'll explain that in a minute, but that feels like it's there as well. It feels a little bit different. Is that because of thiols? Like, is there thiol activity going on in this glass? Yeah, so these are two beers on track that are thialized, I guess is the mm -hmm. phrase that certainly the yeast producers are trying to use as sort of a shorthand to explain everything that's going on here. Yeah. So thiols are an organic essentially sulfur compound that is intensely aromatic like our noses can pick this up in like parts per trillion wow right so it, they're super aromatic compounds lots of them aren't particularly pleasant aromas mm. um beer geeks will know these thiols as, as mercaptan which is something you, you get tested on when you're doing off flavors and it smells a bit like rotten cabbage garbage like thiols can smell like that also when you chop an onion that really green onion flavor that's a thiol as well no way. Um, but it also certain thiols have amazing tropical fruit character right okay and that is basically what brewers are now start starting to look for and what winemakers have known about for a long long time okay so when you know when we sort of see these wine tasters and they're talking about all these kind of like wild flavors lots of tropical stuff like you say and you sort of think, is that surely that can't all be in the glass? That's yeah. thiols. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, potentially, yeah. Right. I mean, they'll get, you know, they have esters, phenols, terpenes like beer yes. does. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, thiols is another element that could be creating that. And in particular, it's well known, these thiol characteristics are well known for appearing in New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs, which are intentionally <sighs> tropical, but dry yes. white wines. Yes. It's like a tropical rainstorm without the rain. Yeah. Kind of. Nothing sounds like poetic. Don't know if that's true. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't ring true, Johnny. But so the, these styles are found in really high concentrations in certain grape varieties, and it's down to the soil, the weather, all this kind of stuff, as well as the variety itself. Right. And we have small amounts of them in hops and indeed in malts. 
Yes, I've heard this. But we cannot access them for one simple reason, which is that traditional brewing yeasts aren't good, well, in fact, they're really, really bad at actually creating the flavours from the thiols. So you have, uh, in hops and in malts and, and in uh, grapes, you have bound thiols. And while they're bound, they're attached to something else, you can't actually smell or taste those aromas and flavours. Right. So you have to break them down, break them apart, and they become volatile. You can get them up your nose, as you did earlier. So potentially there are all these sort of hidden flavour components that are, are bonded even in, in the malt and in, in the hops that we're unable to unlock. The, the brewer's yeast that we've been using for millennia just isn't able to unlock it, but yeah. there are new kinds of yeast. Exactly. Well, I mean, there's, there's new kinds of yeast. We should talk about the old kinds of yeast as well, because we've known that there are small proportions of, of thiols uh, in our malts and in our hops. And we've actually, brewers for a while, have been trying to get hold of them by using wine yeasts. Right. So a little blend, a little amount of, of wine yeast in with your brewer's yeast, and you might be able to extract um, ex extract these, these aromas and these flavours. But there are now increasingly, because there's lots of complications with using wine yeast in beer, you can get all kinds of fennels that might mask the delicious flavours you're getting. Um, we've decided, well, why don't we just adapt the yeasts that we have? So we now have the technology, it's called CRISPR, uh, to actually genetically modify our yeasts and give them the gene that creates um, that allows them to create a certain, essentially, enzyme, um, a, a betalase that can break down, unbind, unbind these thiols and get it out into the beer. So we've got the GMO versions that can do it, we've got the wine yeasts that can do it, yeah. and then also there's a new product which is being used in this one from WHC, um, and this is a, a naturally cultivated brewing yeast that okay. can also unbind thiols. Wow. So it's not a GMO product. We can't have GMO product no, in our UK. drink in the UK. Um, so, so you can use this in particular. So that's the big sort of leap that's happened. There's uh, Berkeley yeast over in California. They've released a yeast and there's a couple of other companies that have done it as well. I actually wrote an article about it for Good Bit Hunting years and years ago, just mm -hmm. when this technology was starting. Um, and they've come a long, long way. And there are so many ways that this can change beer. Biggie, just a quick note to let you know that the Craft Beer Channel is powered by Patreon. Sign up for exclusive merchandise and discounts. As well as access to our amazing Discord forum full of us, amazing beer geeks, and of course, homebrewers. Every one of you guys and girls out there that signs up to join our Patreon, you are helping us keep the lights on at Craft Beer Towers. You are supporting independent content. I can't make that any clearer. Absolutely, and as well as doing that, you're helping us support small and amazing craft beer. Brewers. So sign up at patreon.com slash craft beer channel or hit the links above. Cheers. Cheers. Love and beer. Does it mean, Johnny, that we can use less hops or, or less malt? Well, this is exactly it. So we've kind of got two issues. One is that we didn't have the yeasts to unbind these thiols. The other is the fact that we don't have many thiols in beer just sort of naturally occurring with the processes that we've built up for millennia yes. not caring about thiols. Yeah. So actually there's some really interesting techniques that brewers have to do to get as many bound thiols as they can in their, in their wort for the yeast to then unlock. Okay. So there's lots of old traditional methods that are coming back such as mash hopping which is throwing hops in with your mash because the enzymes in there can create bound thiols. Um, we're also starting to look at, at biotransformation again, so early hop additions, which sort of became the rage when New England got big as well. We were talking about biotransformation, the idea of, of yeast going to work on the hops and creating new flavor compounds, most famously changing geraniol into citronella, which are terpenes, another form of aroma. Um, but we know that biotransformation can also create uh, free thiols as well, so we can get aroma that way. So there's lots of different ways that we can technically create these bound thiols, and now we have the yeast to actually unlock those flavours. So as a result, in some ways we can use less hops definitely and still get lots of aroma and flavour out, mm. but in other ways we can just use more hops and get even more flavour. And that's usually the way that craft beer is operating, is that we've got this new tool that could be used for efficiency. We'll just use it to max everything yeah, out. Yeah, exactly that. So <laughs> I, I doubt they've reduced the hop bill of this, and also they may have used mash hopping, so there's yeah. you know even more hops going in at the start of the process. But what's really interesting uh, and more significant is that we can use different hops. Yes. Right? Yes. So there are hops that have actually some free thiols and lots of bound thiols. Unsurprisingly, they're hops that we know and love, things like Citra, 
Mm -hmm. uh, things like mosaic, things like, uh, in particular, Antipodean hops, so uh, Australian and New Zealand hops That's have these styles. So, like, it's interesting that they're in that sort of terroir mm -hmm. in the same way that the, the white wines that come from that region the high end dials. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to make <clears throat> that connection, haven't you? If, if you've got great varieties um, in the soils and the, the climate, it, mm. it would kind of make sense if other plants had those, those capabilities from that part of the world as well. Um, but what's really interesting is that there are lots of hops that aren't from that region. Yes. That actually have lots and lots of bound foils in them if you can get to them. And these are not varieties that are traditionally ever used in New England IPAs. No. One of them is one of our favourite hops, which is SARS. No way. So if you throw SARS into the mash, you're going to be creating potentially lots of tropical aromas further down the line. What? That's, that's blowing my mind. So <clears throat> I'm on the lookout for tropical pilsners incoming. Well, I mean, hey, yeah, you could use it to introduce tropical aromas to, um, to your lagers as well. There, there's another thing we should talk about before we get into uh, the Motueka, in which we're going to see if these you know, less tropical hops can still present these massive aromas. And that is thiol boosting. So I've said that you can do mash hopping. You can also use certain varieties in the whirlpool or uh, in the dry hop during the early dry hop during yeah. fire transformation to get more thiols. You can also literally just add thiols. So there's a couple of companies. Isn't uh, that cheating, Johnny? Uh, well, when we're using hop extracts, why can't we use a, a wine grape extract as well? This is, this is making me think of like 1980s bodybuilders that are like juicing. With to like get big and strong protein powder for beer is that is that is that kind of what it is? It's kind of like protein powder for beer, but it's like <laughs> juicy powder for Just powder. tropical passion fruit. I, mean, I, I see it more as as, as uh, what's that terrible stuff in the states that's powdered powdered fruit juice? A Kool Aid. Kool Aid, yeah, Kool Aid. <laughs> um, so a, a lot of the research that's been done and a lot of the product development that's been done has been done in New Zealand by uh, just the founder of Garage Brewing, mm. an amazing brewery down in New Zealand. And he, for the last couple of years, has been working on a product product called Phantasm. Great name. And this is basically powdered thiol extracts from grapes. And the reason this is absolutely fascinating, this blew my mind, right? I didn't know. So in lots of uh, wineries down in New Zealand, they have what I think they call it like a tank bomb. And what it is, is essentially it's varieties or vines that have really high thiols. They just make a single, uh, a single wine from that in a tank. Yeah. And then they can blend it into wines that haven't quite hit like the tropical profile that they're looking for. So ah. it's, like, it's like a thiol, thiol tank bomb. So just they used to blend in. Incredibly flavorful, maybe blow your head off. Yeah, sort of stuff. I mean, too much on its own. A bit like you yeah, know the yeah. blending that you see in vineyard, in wineries yeah. and in particularly sour breweries That's around the world. That's interesting. So they're like blending it back. Yeah. With that that thiol experience, just to go. Well, this one's be a, a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Um, and so he's basically taken those those thiol producing uh, grapes and he's made a powder out of. I think it's out of the spent the spent grapes that are left over. There's still plenty of thiols left in that. That's turned into a powder that you can then add to your beer. Um, I think during early fermentation as well. And basically, you get a load of bound thiols. If you've got thiolized yeast, okay. So you still need the thiolized yeast. Absolutely, yeah. They're but not this... free thiols. They're bound thiols. Okay, okay. So it, it is literally like you're adding, you know, some sort of component to a fire that's making it go. Boom! Yeah. All of a sudden. It's, it's, it's a fire lighter. Yeah. Yeah. It's like powdered that. potential. Powdered potential. That's, That's a good name. Yeah. That is a crack. good name. Um, <laughs> right. So, so we're now going to move on uh, to the next beer from Track. Yeah. So this, this uses thiol boost. It is called Dance First Pale Ale TH Plus. Yeah, good name. Catchy. Motueka and thiol boost. Yeah. So you wouldn't. Although Motueka, Motueka is bred from SARS, interestingly, yeah. which is probably why part, another and it, reason why this is another New Zealand hop as well. Another right? New Zealand hop. Huh. So it's essentially a, a cross and a, SAR, and a New Zealand grown SARS. Wow. So it's got lots of thiols in it, and then they've added Thiol Boost, which is WHC's version of Phantasm. Yeah, thiols for miles. Johnny. Thiols for, <laughs> for miles. Um, but you wouldn't traditionally single hop a New England beer with Motueka. You definitely no. use it, as no. we did in our double IPA homebrew yeah. recipe, to add lemon and lime yeah. character. Like an aroma hop, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't be like necessarily make a double IPA just with Motueka because it wouldn't have that tropical vibe really that you're looking for. But maybe with the thiol boost, it, it will. It can be. So hang on, it's definitely got that citrus note. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, that lemon and lime is 100% there, but underneath, 
And some of that character will be coming just from the yeast, because these are New England yeast, they're producing tropical yeah. fruit flavours anyway. Yeah. But there is a ton of... For me, this is more sticky, right. weirdly, than, you know, a big, big alpha, big beta kind of hop. This is... It's more sticky, it's like... You've reduced down the passion fruit, so it's got really sticky. I'll drink to that. Yeah. Mate, that's pretty passion good. Passion fruit eh? yogurt is what I get from that. That's great. That's and some again, magic. That acidity. Oh, yeah. I mean, it. it's remarkable the amount of flavour that you can get at 4.9 and also the amount of tropical aroma that you can get without it feeling flabby and sticky, which is the issue with a lot of New England pale ales. You yeah. know, with IPAs, you've got the bitterness, you've, you've got the alcohol. It feels complex. When you're down at like four and a half, five percent with a New England pale, it can be quite chalky. It can be mm. quite, you know, not very crushable. It's it's a flavour bomb, flavour explosion in your mouth. And then it does it. It's not like a long. It's not a lingerer. No. It's kind of like so you can definitely quaff this a yeah. lot. And you know, to be fair, Track are very good at making that kind of beer. Like Sonoma, they're three point eight percent, essentially tropical New England session pale is very much along these lines as well. So some of that is the way that Track have brewed it, but lots of it is the fact that we're getting so much aroma without, you know, really low attention rates, without really high hopping rates. We're managing to produce loads of character without so many of the side effects of, of those, you know, heavy hopping rates and stuff like that. So it, it's a really, really exciting thing because, you know, it's not just about using less hops. Sometimes using less hops, bear with me, is a good thing because hops really impact drinkability. They really, sorry, big dry hops really impact drinkability, astringency, mouthfeel. Yes. Yeah. If you're making something a bit more sessionable, you might want less of that. It's, I mean, it's amazing. I think going back, circling all the way back to the beginning, I do feel like this has unlocked flavor profiles that I, I'm not used to drinking in beers. Um, and that can only be a good thing, right? Because they're beautiful flavors. Yeah. And like maybe these aren't the flavors for you, but it's amazing that now we can we can experience them in beers. I, I mean, I say this all the time that you know some flavors aren't. Look, Sabro is the classic example. Yeah. Lots of people hate Sabro, but it's brilliant that it exists because particularly in New England IPA, which is a very samey kind of style, this is how we get variety into that style. It's through thiols, it's through Sabro, it's through you know these neo Mexicanas hops um, like Talus that produce kind of absolutely wild, unusual flavors. We need these things, and brewers need them as well. Can you think of any other styles of beer that thialized yeast could be really great with? I mean, I think, you know, if, if you can use things like SARS, uh, uh, Calypso, some, uh, some other hops, a bit, a bit out there, mm -hmm. um, you can start using those in lagers in the mash hopping, you know? Um, and so we could start to see slightly more tropical, uh, I, I guess, India pale lagers essentially, but you could, you wouldn't make an India pale lager. You'd you'd make Just a, a straight tropical lager. pale ale. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, so you could definitely see some something something there. I think also there's the potential to get these flavors into uh, mixed fermentation beers, Ooh. because if you want to produce these amazing tropical flavors in like a pale a pale sour ale, you know, a dry hopped. Some of my favorite beers have been like citra led mixed firm beers. Yeah. You could you could get the stylized flavors in there as well, and that could be very exciting. So it's it's anything where you're looking for real pronounced, I guess slightly acidic yes. hop flavors. Yeah, it could really work for. So yeah, lagers, IPAs, mixed firm pails. Could I could see good. it in in quick sours as well, like just to like amp up that already really quick way of getting sort of big like wow kind of shocking yeah. flavors. There's so many ways that thiols could increase the variety that is within the IPA sphere or yeah. pretty much any style. And I can't wait to see what brewers Mate. do with this. Cask file. Cask files. <laughs> Dude, come on. <laughs> I can't wait for that day. Yeah, I mean, you might have to wait a little while. Um, I'm going back in with a motto Eka. Um, so yeah, if you've got questions about files, hit us up. Um, I might be able to answer them, and if not, I know who to ask. Um, and there are links if you want to delve further in or you think we've got something wrong and you want to check. Uh, there's loads of links in the descriptions for this video to learn a bit more. To Thiles, man. To Thiles. Mm -hmm.